the ideas of each class are based on one principle, and that is you create your present reality with the thoughts that you think right now. We mentioned a number of times, there's the word mind. What does mind stand for? I look at it as an acronym, it's Rashi Tavis. It's an abbreviation for memory, because we all have memories of all our grateful moments, plus we all have memories of our highlights in our life. When people who remember their highlights live with the highlights as their personal reality right now. Especially in the series, we focus a lot on joy, self-confidence, courage, those qual positive qualities. When your memory of your positive qualities now helps you to be with those traits right now. Even if statistically you've been in negative states more often than positive states, but as you, your memory is in the positive moments of your life, that is what you create as your present reality. I is, stands for imagination. The I of the mind stands for imagination. Everything about the future is your imagination because it's only a picture in your mind. And the past is your imagination even if it really happened because whatever happened in the past is only the way you subjectively view that now. A lot of times people will say, oh, I'll look at rough situations, they'll say, I'll be able to look back later on and laugh. Now you don't find it that funny, but later on you realize there's something funny, there's something humorous about it. So, imagination. People with a positive imagination create wonderful things. Now, when you, especially when it's talk about our positive traits, our positive midos, the positive traits, and especially today's trait we're going to focus on is serenity, which is an inner calm, inner peace. We all have had moments of inner peace, even if the last time we had it when we were one years old. <laughs> mean to say, we had moments of inner calm and inner peace. People go on vacations. Everybody had moments of stress. People who say, my life is very stressful, when they think about their life, they remember their moments of stress. When people who say, my life has been filled with many moments of inner calm. I have over a thousand moments of inner calm. Now, how many moments do you have to have to have a thousand moments of inner calm? Well, One thousand moments. This is a moment. That was a moment. Okay, good. Now, so that means a person can have a real lot of stress in their life, but they also have a lot of inner peace, a lot of serenity, a lot of menuchas and nefesh, a lot of that inner peace. And if that is uppermost in your mind, that's how you experience this moment. So we have the mind, memory, imagination, and is now. It's always now. And now you get to choose your next thought, your next words, and your next actions. So what do we choose now? Our next three things. Thoughts, words, and actions. What do you choose right now? Thoughts, words, and actions. Thoughts, words, and actions. And that creates your feelings. So we ultimately create our thoughts, feelings, words, actions by what we're thinking next, what we're saying next, and what we are actions. D is decide how you want to be. D is decide how you want to be, and it's 3D. Decide how you want to be. Be determined to be that way. Make a decision. Make a determination to be that way and do. So that's mind. That is valuable for everything in life and especially for serenity. So in order to be able to master serenity, all you have to do is remember times and moments when you felt an inner calm and inner serenity. Imagine yourself being calm and serene. So even if a person hardly ever calm and serene, and menuchas and nefesh, peace of mind. But just imagine it. Wow, imagine I have total peace of mind. That would be wonderful. And that's it. That's all you have to be now. And if you can really imagine it, you're feeling that way now. The, and you're always now. Decide how you want to be. Be determined to win and do. Okay. There's a very good book by Galway, the two 
physicians as co-authors called The Inner Game of Stress. I really feel the book should have been called The Inner Game of Serenity because he's telling you how to be calm. He wrote many years ago, over the, before he wrote this book, about 30 years before that, he wrote The Inner Game of Tennis. And basically, he wrote in that book that we all have two selves. The two selves, one self is like a dime store calculator. It works. You can multiply, subtract, add, you know. But it's like a dime store, dime store thing. It's a very cheap little thing. It doesn't do too much. And then you can have a multi-million or even a multi-billion dollar computer. That computer does everything. That computer is awesome. That computer is really wonderful. And most people choose, unbeknownst to them, they choose their dime store calculator rather than their multi-million dollar computer because the multi-million dollar computer is our brain in action. That's our mind. In English, we have the word mind. In Hebrew, you don't have an exact word for the word mind. Um, but our patterns of thinking, and so when we remember anything, that's with our mind. We imagine things, that's our mind. When we choose how to be right now, that's our mind. So to, for serenity and inner peace, we need to be able to choose that type of thing. And in the Torah world, we have one day a week that we celebrate creation of the universe. That's Shabbos. Zecher l'may sabrashis. Shabbos is a reminder of the creation. We celebrate, we appreciate, we have gratitude for everything. Plus, it's a day of serenity. It's a day of nuchas and nefesh. day of peace of mind. Now, is it possible to observe Shabbos and not have peace of mind? Yeah, it's very possible. Sit at a Shabbos table, a person has a number of little kids, and it's very fast. And unless you have triplets, or a bunch of, even if you have two, t two twins, they're, they're still going to be different ages. So the, you're going to have children of different ages. So schools don't work like that. You have kids in the kindergarten or in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, seventh grade, ninth grade. And you have a family to sitting together. If you're going to talk in the level of the older children, the younger children will be bored. If you're talking to the level of the younger children, the older children will be bored. So the challenge for anybody, and if you have guests, um, if they're all pretty much similar, then okay. So Shabbos can be a challenge. Even if a person's by themselves, it can be a challenge because your quality of your Shabbos will be the quality of what your thoughts are. And that's why the sages say that on Shabbos we should look at it as if all our work was completed. Now, our work is never completed. If a person keeps to-do lists, your, your to-do list will always have something else on it. There's always more things to do. You have letters to answer. And that's the old days, letters to answer. Today, people have emails. Um, and there's an unlimited amount of things that we can do. Because they said, oh, computers is going to make the world a lot easier and simpler. It doesn't really. This makes everything much more complicated. But ultimately, everything is dependent on where is my mind? Where are my thoughts? And that's why, and especially, um, living in here in Eretz Yisrael, like Israel, and especially a place in the middle now that there's missiles hitting different cities here in Israel. We had a few sirens in Yushalayim. It's very easy for a person to get in a state of non-serenity, stress. Everybody's life is very easy to get in a state, thoughts of stress. However, we have the choice of choosing inner menuchas and nefesh, peace of mind, which is crucial for prayer, tefillah, when we pray, is it crucial to have peace of mind? So your mind is on the words you're saying. Studying Torah. Just interacting with other people. When a person is a lot of stress, they get angry easily. We gave a class in our series, Anger the Inner Teacher. That's one of the ten classes we have. After Midos in general, character traits. In general, we talk about one especially, Anger the Inner Teacher. And anger goes together with stress. Because when a person is stressed out, it's easy to get agitated, it's easy to get irritated, easy to get frustrated. On the other hand, 
if everything goes perfect and we're totally relaxed and we had enough proper nutrition and everything is going exactly the way we want it, it's very easy to be calm. I don't know anybody's life that works like that. Life doesn't work like that. That it's always exactly the way we want it to be. And that's the fun in life, and that's a challenge, and that's how we keep growing. Dealing with challenging situations in a wise way, with a spirituality, with a ruchnius. The emunah and betachan. Having that emunah, that things are purposeful and meaningful. Having that inner betachan, that inner trust in the Almighty. Because if you live in a world of meaning, it's a totally different than a living in a meaningless world. So a basic Torah consciousness that life is purposeful and meaningful. Viktor Frankl, who himself went through concentration camps in the Second World War, wrote a book that, uh, very, very well-known book, Man's Search for Meaning. And he talks about even in the most awful, horrible situations that a person could possibly be in, if you have a sense of why to live, you have a sense of meaning in your life, you'll have the strength and the courage and the empowerment to keep living and keep accomplishing and keep doing positive things. Because he, as Viktor Frankl says so strongly, that everything can be taken away from a person except that power, as long as your mind works, you have the ability to choose your next thoughts. You have the ability to decide how you're going to view things. Because in the exact same situation, one person says, oh, this is such a tragedy. And another person looks at the exact same situation. We can grow from this situation. I, it's challenging, and challenging situations help you grow from adversity. Because the same way, this post-traumatic stress syndrome, PTSD, this post-traumatic growth syndrome, which is that you can develop and grow from trauma, from challenges, from difficulties. And if everything goes perfect, it's very exciting in the beginning. After a while, it gets totally boring. Just everything, everything today went perfect. The newspapers won't print up too much. Okay? Today was a perfect day. Everything happened for everybody exactly what they would have wanted to. There was zero crime, zero excitement, anything on the planet. Everybody was satisfied with everybody did the way they did the jobs. We have no Lush and Hara to write. Can't write anything negative about anybody. Nobody did anything negative yesterday. And the, I mean, it's boring, right? So we need a little excitement in our life. Now, a person who lives a Torah way of life, the excitement is, I want to understand the Torah. I don't want to understand the Torah I'm learning. I want to find ways to, to keep it up aim, honor and respect my parents. I want to find more ways to be kind to people. So the key element is that we can grow and develop from life experiences, realizing that I create the quality of my life with my thinking. I create the quality of my life with my thinking. Let's all repeat that sentence. I create the quality of my life with my thinking. So there's high quality thinking and low quality thinking. High quality thinking gives you happiness and joy. High quality thinking helps you be empowered, self-confident. High quality thinking helps you be, have inner peace, menuchas and nefesh. Low quality thinking gets frustration and anger and irritation. Now, we speak to a lot of people. If you speak to somebody who's very calm, who's <coughs> highly, who's wise and inner calm, you always feel good in that person's presence. If you speak to somebody, he's always very irritated and gets angry easily. And whatever you do, they have an eye in raw, a negative eye. They always find fault with whatever you do. And, they just, and the way they say anything is always the worst possible way. It's very easy to get irritated and not be in a serene place. Now, the good news is that since we're not Siamese twins, we can always go away from that person, even if... We're around that person, let's say, uh, along many hours a day, but it's not 24 hours a day. So the person who's we're around 24 hours a day is ourself. We're the only person that we're with 24 hours a day, and we have this inner dialogue all the time. We have a constant flow of thoughts. It's humanly impossible to be 
never thinking a negative thought. You don't need to, and you don't need to make, if you make impossible goals, when do you reach them? Never. So make, if you make goals, and when you make goals, we should make them that are possible. And it's possible to upgrade our patterns of thinking. So the goal is joy for progress, joy for progress. What's the goal, everybody together? Joy for progress, joy for progress. So let's say a person has three more minutes of serenity. Wow, by serenity, inner peace, minuchas and nefesh, peace of mind. Three, wow, today I had three more minutes of peace of mind. Let's just try that. Today I had three more minutes of peace of mind. Then you feel wonderful. Wow, today was a wonderful, I'm, I'm progressing, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Now you can easily say, I had 17 hours of distress. Or I had seven good minutes today. So what we focus on in memory is what the day was. So the high quality day, so let's say a person had a lot of rough moments in the day, and a real lot of rough moments, a lot of things didn't go the way he wanted to. But he went to check his lottery ticket, and he found that he won 50 million shekels. Right? That was the highlight. And then a few other disappointments. His air conditioner broke down, and it was a very hot day, and a few other things went wrong, and uh, his meal wasn't ready on time, and he didn't like the way something tasted. And what's he going to remember? Hey, today I got, I got 50 million uh, liras even. The old days, liras, in Shkolim. 50 million Shkolim, 50 million dollars, 50 million euros, whatever. The ever the currency will be of a person had got a 50 million one day. That's what the highlight of the day. Now the fact that we're alive. This we mentioned in class number one. We finished when we finished the series, which today is the tenth day of the series, tenth class in the series, and we're going to start again next time. We mentioned always in the first day about Reb Chaim Shmulevitz, the late head of Mir Yeshiva. He always used to say like this: There's a verse in Eicha that we read on Tisha B'Av. Ma yisonein Adam Chai. What should a live person complain about? The Gemara says, the Talmud says, Dayu Shuchai, Tractate Kedushin. The Gemara says, what are you complaining about? It's sufficient that you're alive. Now what does it mean, what are you complaining about? It's sufficient you're alive? Said Rav Chaim Shmulevitz with the following mushal, the following metaphor. Let's say you have a glass. The glass fell down and broke. You're a little upset the glass fell and broke. What would be if the exact same moment the glass fell and broke, somebody comes running in, I checked out your lottery ticket, and you got five, six, two, nine, four, eight, seven, six, five, eight. You just won the international lottery. How upset will you be over that broken glass? Nothing, right? Because it's a context. The context is, I just won this lottery, this major, major lottery, and so the glass fell and broke. A little upset about that, I have to pick up the little pieces, but wow, I just won the lottery. That is what the sages are defining this verse, that life itself is so fantastic, is so great, that what are you upset about? You have context is you're alive. And the fact that you're alive you have the ability to choose joy for a living, joy for a living. I am joyful that I am alive. I am joyful that I am alive. Seven words. What are the seven words? I am joyful that I am alive. Right? So when you have that consciousness, I am joyful that I'm alive. Now, we say in this class, whoever has a telephone, please keep the ringers on, because whenever you hear a ringer of telephone, Baruch Hashem I'm alive. Thank God I'm alive. Thank God I can hear, right? Thank God I'm alive. Thank God I can hear. When you do that every time a telephone rings, so then every time a telephone rings, instead of getting annoyed as some people do, you start feeling great. Wowee, that's a reminder. I'm alive. That's a reminder. I can hear. That's wonderful, right? So it's always our choice, our subjective choice, how we choose to think about anything, and we create the reality of any moment by where our thoughts are in that moment. It's a simple idea, a major idea, and it's life transforming. So if you want to be serene and inner calm, you say, everything helps me become calmer and calmer. Like this traffic jam. I'd rather not be in a traffic jam right now, but since I'm in traffic jam anyways, I have a choice. I can be real upset over the traffic jam, or I can choose an inner calm. I am calm with this traffic jam. 
I am calm. Now we have a great tool. That we have a great tool that we mentioned when we talk about anger than her teacher. So we have the tool, a technique, that works great. And that is counting from 10 to 1. Go like this. 10. Deeper and deeper relaxed. 9. Everybody together. Deeper and deeper relaxed. 8. Deeper and deeper relaxed. 7. Deeper and deeper relaxed. 6. Deeper and deeper relaxed. 5. Deeper and deeper relaxed. 4. Deeper and deeper relaxed. 3. Deeper and deeper relaxed. 2. Deeper and deeper relaxed. 1. Deeper and deeper relaxed. If that works, terrific. If it doesn't work, you go 20. Deeper and deeper relaxed. 19. So it's going to work because breathing slowly, and especially if you keep repeating the words, deeper and deeper relaxed, it works. Whether it works faster, little by little, it, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And that's the first sentence in Gateway to Happiness, which we mentioned in the first class in the Joy series. Happiness is a skill that can be learned. Including that, let's say inner serenity. Serenity is a skill that can be learned. So if a person says, you know what, I'm always a nervous wreck. Ah, oh, if you can create nervousness, you can create inner calm. Let's try that sentence. If you can create nervousness, you can create inner calm. Or if I can create nervousness, I can create inner calm. Because ultimately it's always thoughts that helps us be nervous and the thoughts that help us be calm. Now, is it always possible to always be serene? For a few people on planet Earth, not for me. I personally do not find this practical in the sense of always being calm. But the goal is not perfection, but progress. What's the goal? Progress. What's the goal? Progress. And the goal is progress. We can always make progress. We can always make progress. And the more we internalize and integrate the attitudes of emunah and betachon, of attitudes, of an inner calm, of that menuchas and nefesh. Reb Simcha Zitzel of Kelm, who was a disciple of Reb Yisrael Salanter, who was the founder of the Musar movement, Reb Simcha Zitzel of Kelm specialized and focused a lot on menuchas and nefesh. And one of the members of his family went to a physician, and the physician said, oh, you need to have more inner calm, inner serenity. So, uh, daughter came to her father and said, oh, that the doctor told me exactly what you always tell us, that we should have inner calm. He said, but the doctor tell you how to do it. And basically that's a Shabbos. But in the consciousness of think the words you use create your reality. And some people use words that are guaranteed to create a lot of stress. Like take a person saying, I remember when I was uh, working on one of my books, I as I was coming here in the Jewish Quarter, I heard someone say, oh, I have a million things to do and I have no time to do it. I don't know too many people really have a million things to do. But if you just say that, I have a million things to do and no time to do it, that makes you feel bad. I feel bad just saying it. I'm not even thinking about it. I don't have a million things to take care of. Now, so but just saying that sentence automatically stresses us out. This is a very stressful situation. No situation is stressful. Every situation is just the way we take it. Now, it could be true, I personally find this situation stressful. That could be a true statement, but I'm going to grow from this situation. Let's all say that sentence. I'm going to grow from this situation. So every situation we're in is a challenge. And that's from Moshe Chaim Lutzato, Mesilat Yasharim. He writes, Hokol in Yoni Olam, Nisyonos Hein Lodom. Every thing in life is a challenge to ultimately to help us grow and develop our mitos, to help us become better, to help us come higher. And we look at everything like that, this too will help me develop more serenity. Serenity goes together with patience. It's a different trait. And I have two books, one book called Patience, one book called Serenity. 
is slightly different. It goes together. A serene person will usually be more patient, and a patient person will usually be more serene. But it's possible to have one without the other, so patience and serenity go together. And the more we practice any positive way of being, the more that becomes our reality. And especially when it's quiet. When we're quiet, it's nighttime, it's quiet. Where we are at is totally in our mind, what our thoughts are. Some people say, oh, I just review all the negative stuff that happened. And people that are joyful and grateful say, I just review every day. What are some of my highlights for today? What are some of my most grateful moments? And we have this ability all the time. We always remember different things. So what if you spontaneously, easily go to negative places? Mentally, put yourself into a better place. And the exact situation, there was a fellow told me, and just yesterday I heard this, the fellow told me that his father was a Holocaust survivor, and when he was about 11 years old, he was complaining that he only had two pieces of cake, he wanted a third piece of cake. So his father said to him, let me tell you something, when, when I was uh, your age, when, uh, I was in a concentration camp, and uh, we had a, having a crust of bread once a week, that was a big delicacy, the one the crust of bread. And he said, after that, it just hit him that, you know what, I shouldn't go to have two pieces of cake. The fact that I didn't get a third piece of cake is not a problem. And this person said that just changed his life. That he said he's in his 50s now, and he says that moment that his father saying that to him, it just it opened his mind up to possibility of how he can live his life. And he never complains about things. And so we always have a certain perspective. We always how we see things. And the more we practice, the more it becomes the positive way of being comes who we are. We mentioned before about Rabbi Prada. Rabbi Prada was a great teacher who had a student who was a little slow. And Rabbi Prada used to repeat every idea to that student 400 times. So Rabbi Chaim Shmulevitz, the late Rashiv Amir, used to ask, why did Rabbi Prada get himself a student who was a little faster? He said Rabbi Prada himself was working on the trait of patience, and he viewed every review as an opportunity to keep developing his patience. So we can do that. Every potentially frustrating situation, this too will make me more and more serene. Let's say that sentence together. This too will make me more and more serene. This too will make me more and more serene. And you can even practice saying that if just get that sentence so it becomes internalized. There's neural pathways. Every time we repeat an idea, the neural pathways get thicker and thicker, so we actually change our brain. When I was a kid, they looked at children, brains keep expanding, and not, uh, they keep developing, and you actually change your brain, but once you get a certain age, your brain stays the same and starts deteriorating. And now they realize, no matter how old somebody is, whether they're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, no matter how old anybody is, Every thought you think changes your brain, and if you review an idea, it becomes stronger and stronger. And in Gateway to Happiness, introduction, I write, no two people read the same book, and you never read the same book twice. Why? Because we're always unique. We always come with our own personal life experiences, our subjective history and how we view things, and we're always different. So if I read something now or hear something now and then I hear it again, I am different. In a month from now, I'm different. In a year from now, I'm different. Five years from now, I'm different. We all are. And so no matter, let's say a person, no matter what kind of childhood a person had, usually people say, well, I had a very stressful childhood. Nevertheless, how am I now? And if we the more stress we have, the more we need to keep practicing. And let's try that tool again, we just mentioned before. And it's really, we have to do it over and over again to really make it part of us. Ten, deeper and deeper relaxed. Everybody together now. Nine, deeper and deeper relaxed. 
Eight. Deeper and deeper relax. Seven. Deeper and deeper relax. Six. Deeper and deeper relax. Five. Deeper and deeper relax. Four. Deeper and deeper relax. Three. Deeper and deeper relax. Two. Deeper and deeper relax. One. Deeper and deeper relax. So every time we repeat this, it becomes more who we are and how we are. It becomes more part of us. And we all have role models. Think of role models of someone you respect, who is a wise person, who is an inner calm. And again, don't aim for perfection. Aim for progress. Aim for progress. If you aim for progress, you can always find yourself making progress. That, that inner peace, inner menuchas and nefesh. Can one influence outside events by this type of thinking, positive thinking? Okay, um, let's say, can we influence, let's say, first other people? To some degree, our emotional state will have an influence on the people we talk to. Because if someone speaks in a very irritated way, and uses both the content of what we say and the quality of our speech is going to have an impact on people we talk to. So if you have, some people bring out the best in people and some people bring out the worst in people. So if we're at our best, we're thinking, we're in a calm, we'll usually be able to bring out the best in other people. Um, whether we can, uh, other situations, hard to say, I'm not gonna say that I don't know. But 100%, we have an inf impact on ourself as we talk to ourselves with an inner calm. And usually we do with the people we talk to. If somebody's really upset with us, if you stay totally so calm and serene and can maintain it, no matter what that person says or does, you can maintain that inner calm. And usually, usually, other people will get calmer when they're talking to us. And 100%? No. It's, uh, it's sort of, but it, there's a statement, there's a verse, Be'yechkam Shlomo Mikolonim. King Solomon was the wisest of all people. Be'yechkam Shlomo Mikolonim. He became he's wiser. And it says in the Medrash, Afilu Minashotim. He was wiser than Shotim, people that are idiots. They were a bit crazy. So my father, of blessed memory, used to say, usually if you want to say somebody's very bright, you say they're a wise person, he's wiser than other wise people. So a person's brilliant, he's smarter, more brilliant than other brilliant people. So what is the idea that he's wiser than Shotim, people that are like crazy? And the answer is that a person in Shota doesn't get to think in terms of reality, and they can think all different ways. So to be able to think in ways that go beyond somebody who can just look at reality in real far out impossible ways, that takes tremendous wisdom and be able to deal with people who are angry, upset, easily irritated, easily frustrated is very challenging, but it's a skill like any other skill and we can keep developing that skill. Um, there's a very good book called Verbal Judo, The Gentle Art of Persuasion by a fellow who had this amazing ability to get people to think better because he, he wasn't a Torah person. So he, he said he had a very bad temper and he easily got angry. But he found that if he consciously did Verbal Judo, in that being able to stay, enter the mind of the pers pe other people uh, that we're dealing with. And Rev. Dessler says this in the third volume, Mechtem Elio, Rev. Dessler has a whole essay on the, about entering the mind and the thought patterns of another person. And the more we can enter, think how other people think, we'll be able to deal with them. So the key element is not, oh, well, I am right. The way I'm seeing things is the right way, but rather enter the world of the person you're talking to 
and from his perspective, help him see it in a way that'll be calming, in a way that'll be wiser. So to summarize, we use our mind as thinking, we have memories, uh, remember times and moments that you had this inner calm and peace of mind, imagination, imagine yourself being in places where it's easy to be calm because imagination works. The same way that people get themselves worried and nervous and upset just with imagination, so too we can use imagination on the positive to be able to create a nuchas and nefesh, that inner peace. And is now, now is where we choose all our thoughts, words, and actions, choose wise thoughts, words, and actions now, and that helps you have wiser, better feelings. And decide how you want to be. Decide that I'm going to gain so much by having an inner peace, by having that peace of mind. Decide how you want to be. Be determined to be that way and do. And that creates us and it enhances your life tremendously. Okay. Mm -hmm.